Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have a video courtesy courtesy of, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, it's Cherno, and they're driving the Tier 8 German battleship, the Bismarck. And this is a great ship. I absolutely love it. The secondaries are hilarious. Good AA. Doesn't have the torpedoes that the Tirpitz has, but you don't really miss them because nothing's going to get close enough under that barrage of secondary fire to get to the 6 kilometer torpedo range. Otherwise, pretty much the same as the Tirpitz, which has been in the game for quite some time, and the Bismarck's starting to get a little long in the tooth as well. Having been here since, I think early summer. I could be wrong on the dates though. They're, my years all just tend to blend together. But she's been a good ship to me and clearly it, it sure no thinks so as well as this looks to be the premium camouflage. No, nope, maybe I'm wrong. I am wrong. I was misled. I only saw the one white mark on the side. Either way, they are going to have an amazing game in this beast of a battleship and do it proud. And right there, one citadel, one kill. And it always seems to be when the ship has no health is when you absolutely drill the shot into the citadel. So Cherno is definitely being cautious here. It sees all the torpedoes. There's a lot of destroyers in this match at four aside, though one enemy DD is already dead. That you don't want to overcommit to a cap, especially when you've got some of those Japanese cruisers nearby, which I can pretty much guarantee you these torps passing his stern right now belong to that dead ship. And there's no real reason to go rushing in to A. They're about to lose their Nuremberg, but, you know, bottom tier ship isn't a huge loss. You can survive through that, and it sure now has come out with pretty much the entirety of their health intact and has 11,000 damage to speak for. You can see uh, it sure now pinging that DD, asking them to get in and get closer. And I don't know entirely what that Bliskovica thinks they're doing, because you know, none of these targets are in range of those torpedoes, and I think there's probably nothing more infuriating to me than a destroyer who just aimlessly keeps throwing torpedoes when it's not even realistic that they could hit something. Because the number of times they've hit me as an ally, or blocked my escape route that I was planning to use, and then all of a sudden there's allied torpedoes is really frustrating, and you're going to see those torpedoes peter out really before they get anywhere. And there they go. So they weren't really ever a threat to anything. You can see the Mayhan maybe turned a little bit, thinking, oh, are these coming at me? But I don't know what that Bliss is doing back there. And, you know, it sure no pinged the map, and you know, is complaining about that DD in chat saying there's no support, let's peel back, like... And other people on the team are starting to get on his case, and that's just not how you drive that destroyer. The Bliskovica is an amazing gunboat, and I see no gunfire from them, and when they're throwing torpedoes, they're miles and miles outside the range of any target. Fortunately, Cherno's team has done a great job capturing Bravo and Charlie, and uh, it looks like a friendly battleship's about to shoot the gap to try to get into Delta, so we'll see how that goes. And I can pretty much guarantee you this Scharnhorst is dead, because if a torpedo doesn't... Uh, I was going to say, Cherno's secondaries are about to. <laughs> So at this point, when you've got a cap lead like this, there's no rush, as I've said. You can play a little more cautiously. Take longer range shots. That one didn't work out so well. Only one over pen, but it doesn't matter. They're not actively pushing into the cap. There's no reason for you to try to defend it aggressively. Both teams are down three ships. And, uh, you know, they're already coming up 
well, they're over 100 points ahead. So you can definitely be a little patient. And at first there, I thought those were just terribly aimed shots at the Bismarck, but once again, I believe just weird graphics bug had the Bismarck targeted. I think in game, Itcherno was actually uh, targeting the Cleveland in behind, or at least let's hope so. And with this volley, definitely is. Kind of letting those secondaries just rack up the hits on a close target, trying to finish that side on cruiser off first. And about 5,000 of that volley, definitely respectable, but take 7,600 in return fire from that Bismarck. And I'm confused as to why their secondaries aren't firing. I think he's got manual secondaries and they're targeted. Okay, now they're targeted for me. Personally, this whole time, I would have had them all over that Bismarck to just chip down the health of a deadly battleship. But it looks like he's going to be doing that job himself, aiming just above the waterline, kind of at the bow. Gets a good pair of penetrating hits and finishes the enemy Bismarck out. There can only be one, right? And, well, I guess there can only be two because the enemy team still has another Bismarck. And then there's this Otago who's just slowly skirting the edge of the map. And not sure what that Otago thinks they're doing because they're so far out of the action. And I know I've mentioned this in videos before. At ACAP, you have to be careful not to do exactly what that Otago's done. You're no use to your team over here. Like, sure, they're firing their guns. They're not going to hit much at that range. And they're letting their teammates get focused down. The ones who are in close trying to actively defend a cap. And right now, things are actually looking pretty good for the enemy team. They finished off the battleship who is running the gap here. They've got Delta and Charlie, and they're capturing Alpha. They've also got the points lead, and they've got the ship's lead now. Fortunately for Itcherno's team, they still do have a destroyer, but he's kind of driving off alone. It is a Hatsu, so its detectability should be decent, but you never want to be running alone too much when you're down on ships because it's just an easy way to get focused down. And there's definitely some deadly ships over there. And something I didn't notice, that Hatsu actually got a team kill. I just saw that in cap, so well, maybe it's best he does drive over there and just stays as far away from friendlies that he can possibly kill as possible. Now there's definitely a big evening factor in that Cleveland getting finished off by the Mogami as they're now going to end up with the A cap and they should be at roughly the same amount of points by the time they've captured it. But at this point as a team you have to decide how are we proceeding? How are we going to make sure we have the advantage for the remainder of the engagements? And I really think the answer is finishing that Otago off. It's all alone. It's cornered in the map more or less. If you can get him dead, you're all on one side pushing into the enemy. Now granted they'd all be pushing back, but you'd have the numbers advantage at that point. And a quick look at the map should tell this Hatsuharu where the enemy DD is. It's in B because that Bismarck clearly isn't in the cap circle yet. It is being captured. And those are just the little pieces of information that you need to be picking up from this box. And that's kind of part of that situational awareness. As you're trying to read the map, guess where things are and work it out, is look what's happening at the caps. I would have considered if I were that destroyer to have not done that move and stayed outside and tried to stealth over here. 
and I get what they were doing and why they chose to get into the cap, but the Bismarck could easily have gotten that cap themselves. And you could have had a destroyer sitting right here, waiting for Cherno to come around the corner, at least throw in Torps. Now, plausibly, Cherno could have their hydroacoustic running, but the enemy team doesn't know it's on cooldown, so maybe that played into their thoughts. And his guns are about to reload. Can he get one last volley before this Bismarck rounds themselves? I'm thinking. I guess he does. Another 10,000. Picking up a good healthy sum of damage. Meanwhile, his two cruisers have finished off that enemy Otago. And, uh-oh, Hatsuharu on the enemy team. Meanwhile, the friendly Hatsu is doing nothing. He's killed a teammate, and he's just been circling here over sea. Now, I know the Nuremberg did detect him with an airplane, but stop turning in circles. Like, you have to commit to something. And fortunately for Cherno, they've got their Hydro back. They know exactly when this Hatsu is going to pop the corner. There's going to be no delay in that spotting, and hopefully... These hefty BB shells do a good job knocking them down, and oh god do they. Can the secondaries finish them out? There they are. And that is why I love this ship. You know, that was 1500 damage that Hatsuharu had left, and one blast of the secondaries at that range, manually targeted, and they just ended it. And it's situations like that, that having the secondary build is so good, because otherwise, that Hatsu is probably getting torpedoes off at him, but very minimum surviving the encounter. And I, I guess it sure no just, you know, subscribes to the cool guys, don't look at explosions, as he fired those shells and immediately started turning his turrets away. And I get why. He's in a turn, he's preparing his guns for the next target. And maybe not watching is exactly why that Citadel landed, finishing off the Nuremberg. We'll never know. But this is another one of those key things battleship players need to be doing. You have to actively be thinking, where is my next shot coming? What is my plan? He fired his shells, immediately got the cursor around to start getting the turrets over, so that he has shots and all of his turrets on target sooner. It's a full volley off. The first four shells doing 3,000. The second set looks like they wound up going short. So that Colorado must have killed their speed, or it looks like they kind of turned away as well and managed to dock a lot of that damage. Unfortunately, it looks like they're continuing that turn right back into a broadside. And, you know, I would say it's questionable here, but it's probably not. The Hatsuharu still has done nothing. They've driven through Charlie. They should have just sat in the frickin' cap and taken it to end this game sooner. But because they haven't, it's going to give Echerno the time to chase down this other Bismarck and ensure that theirs is the only one that survives the day. But you do have to wish that that Hatsu had their head on straight. Team kill, they did absolutely nothing when they drove all the way over there to sea. And now they're just more interested, it looks like, in getting Torps off at this enemy battleship rather than helping. And you can see, once again, in chat, you know, someone congratulating it Cherno, but at the same time saying, let's report this Hatsu. Because that's kind of my understanding of the report system is and I could be wrong on this but it's more meant to affect the karma the reports to my knowledge unless you send in actual reports to wargaming with evidence for that kind of hate behaviors um, they just affect your karma so you know someone who 
plays like junk all the time probably doesn't necessarily deserve to have a high karma and you know to most it doesn't matter but it's still something and it affects your kind of status in the game and I know at one point Wargaming had mentioned giveaways for people who maintain good standing but they never really outlined that. So for the time being it's just a number in your profile but you know who do you want on your team? The guy who's got hundreds of points or the zero? Because I know what I'd rather. I'd rather the guy who's got all those points because not a lot of people throw compliments around. So when people are, you tend to have to believe it's because they made a good play or were just good to play with. Das gegnerische Team steht kurz vor dem Sieg. And once again, because of that Hatsu's refusal to capture that point when they had it sitting there for them, Icherno's team is down. And they're actually losing points. They're falling further and further behind, and they've just got to kill this Bismarck. Now, if this Bismarck had any idea what was going on in this team, he should have just driven away. He just had to survive, and he would have won. You know, but unfortunately, he probably thinks they're gonna get the caps I'm gonna have to kill something I've got to get some ships while I can there's a Cleveland on you know 7,000 health that's a single volley for that Bismarck so he's probably hoping he can get him and then maybe win a duel but from everything I've seen from Icherno here he is a smart battle player battleship player and they're not just gonna throw a game away. He gets over, full broadside, 11,000 damage, knocks that Bismarck down to single hit territory, and his turn there carries him behind cover. So there's no reciprocated volley. And that's a key. If you're gonna do things like that where you show your full broadside, you have to make sure it's for as short a time as possible. And then another smart move here, ensuring that enemy Bismarck stays spotted as he's behind the edge of land, and well, the Bismarck's doing the same thing. You can see the hydro detection indicator. And well, this is basically gonna be two pig bullies punching each other in the face until one passes out. And all told, very well played game. 324,000 credits, 6,700 XP, close quarters expert, Kraken, devastating strike, high caliber Confederate, and 136,000 damage in those five kills. Definitely putting them top of the team. And there's no real surprise. Like, you can add up, what, the next four players on his team to kind of make up the same amount of kills. But it wasn't a singular effort, but it was a very good effort by Icherno in this one. And when you start to look at the actual damages done to all these different vessels, then you start to realize it more. And sure, a couple of the kills were lower damage kills, but there were a couple other ships he did a ton of damage to and didn't end up getting to finish off. He did, however, make sure there was only one Bismarck standing at the end of this match. And he walked away with 230,000 credits and 6,700 experience. Thank you, Cherno, for sharing this replay. For anyone else who wants to send replays in, quicksilverslash at gmail.com. And I will happily commentate it and throw it up here. I love watching your guys' content. If you enjoyed this one, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash. I'll have another one for you guys later.